everybody wants to play the SEC until they do. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I don't know if I've – we're talking about Trump, by the way. Uh, I don't know. Are we if, on? Have we started? We're, oh, we're live. Let's go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's like let's make about ha half of half of people angry. <laughs> Roll Tide. Let's yeah. piss the rest of <laughs> yeah, One or the other. <laughs> But uh, there, there's this uh, Jimmy Fallon skit where he takes uh, Barack Obama's speech whenever Osama bin Laden was killed, uh -huh. and then Trump's speech whenever Baghdadi was killed. Yeah. And um, <laughs> it's the funniest thing you've ever seen. Whether you like Trump or hate Trump, it is a it's lot hilarious. of comedy. It's a hilarious. lot of comedy in, in a, a few short minutes. So Listen, uh, he has provided a lot of laughter for me. Yeah. So... All right, I guess we should talk about real estate. Welcome to Tuesday Morning Coffee. It's our first episode here in a while. Uh, I've got Tony, the New Year Woodall, uh, here with me. 2023, woo. we're here. Yeah. And uh, new we've and got improved. new and improved, the new the new version. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who it was, but somebody posted, you know, we just released Curriculum 2.0. And they said, is Brad 2.0 out yet? <laughs> and I, awesome. I said, well, I think my wife would like a new updated version, <laughs> yeah. uh, better version. So if, if you find Brad 2.0, let me know. I think everybody out there would probably be okay with having whoever, you know, if you can't be with the one you love. Whoa, love whoa, them. whoa. Watch, watch Tone. Uh, and uh, be in so trouble would soon. love to have their significant other all of a sudden turn up 2.0. I, I, I don't think I could handle it if I got a 2.0 version. Ooh. It's just too. It's so good now, Casey. Do you hear this? It's 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 so good now. I just I couldn't I couldn't begin to even. We're talking about Brad 2.0. The comment in the in the um, Facebook page about Brad 2.0 is that out yet? And he and he was bragging on you, saying I don't believe I can handle Casey 2.0. Casey 2.0. Well, 1.0 is so good. He said 2.0 would be overload for him. Yeah, just just overload. Yeah. Okay. Is 2.0 always better? Well, I think it's supposed to be. We thought about it that way. <laughs> okay, thanks, Casey. Good to have you. <laughs> you just totally shot down our little yeah, thing yeah, you're just doing there. Too much logic. Um, Two point oh, always better. So, it's been about a month. Yeah. Have a good holiday season. The yeah, whole thing. Yeah. Santa, Santa was there. Cool. And um, yeah, a lot of cookies. A lot of. Um, a lot of Christmas cheer, so much Christmas cheer that I ha I'm, I'm on dry January right now. <laughs> I understand. A well, lot of Christmas cheer. My, my buddy, Justin Cutler, he uh, he gave me this big box, or me and my wife, this big box of Godiva chocolates. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, of course, I went ham sandwich on all that. After ham sandwich. Just, just eating way the, the, the stuff I shouldn't be eating. And, and the next day, I either caught the, the flu or COVID. I don't know what it was. Yeah. But I was down for about a week, and I'm just now starting to get to 100. percent Yeah, um, but it was, it was rough. Well, mine when I started dry January, um, about the third, I woke up in the morning and thought I was dying. I mean, it, I, I had the worst headache. I did think I had COVID, mm -hmm. and uh, so I called my doc, and he said, "Well, tell me what's going on with you that's different from last year." And I said, "Well, I'm I, I'm trying to work on my health again." And, uh, you know, I've started, I've been doing some uh, yoga quite a bit not here in the last about a month and, and I'm doing dry January. And he said, whoa, 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 <laughs> he said, you're doing dry January. And I said, that's right. And he said, you're two days in there. I said, I am. And he said, well, I happen to know what you're drying from and, and it's full of sugar and you're experiencing a major sugar drop. Right now. Do, you, do you drink that purple drink like Lil Wayne? I, I don't know Lil Wayne. It's, uh, I know Lil James. <laughs> That's true. But I don't know Lil Wayne. <laughs> Mine's not purple. It's, okay, well, never mind. But I, I didn't know if it was that. What do they call it? Mud? Mud in the Gucci Mane song? In the Gucci Mane. Sir? I don't yeah. even know what the Gucci Mane is. Uh, <laughs> see, we're just way off. All right. I know it. I'm sorry. Is please that continue. one of Merle Haggard's greatest I, I, I think it was. <laughs> so anyway, my dropping of, of, the, of the juice in January caused the sugar drop. And yeah. so I had to start eating a little piece of candy every day. So Interesting. Sugar up. And that's surprising in a way because, I mean, you drink a little bit, but you, you weren't a heavy drinker. No, I'm not a heavy drinker. I mean, I weigh about 240. So but with 6'8", I mean, that's not real heavy. I'm kind of a light. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. 
Makes sense. Well, today, guys, we're going to be talking about how to make 2023 the best year yet. Okay. Oh, I like that. And I really wanted to um, hold this off until really like the second week of the year, because at this point, everybody, not everybody, uh, I'd say probably half of people don't even think about the new year because they've lost hope completely. But um, before they they lost hope, um, they would generally look at the new year or maybe around your birthday and think, oh, you know, like another year around the sun. Um, what can I do to make this year better? And I think that that's a good question, right? But generally by March, if you if you set goals for the new year, oftentimes you forgot whatever in the hell they were right. to start with. Right. And so in my opinion, that really begins second, third week in January because you start to go back to complacency. You start to go back to your routine ah. and make no mistake about it that motivation gets you started, but it's not going to get you there. What, what gets you there is good habits and the commitment. So you're going ahead and pre-planning when your drop off is going to start. Yeah, that's why we're here. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's why we're here. So um, before I really get into a few ideas that I have for you guys to, to look at, um, I want to go over two deals of the day. So I really should have should have gone here first. Uh, the first, Will Bauer, shout out to you, uh, posted this about an hour ago in the group. So I'm going to read this. But we've had this happen three, four, five times in my career. <clears throat> so he says, okay, not trying to jinx it, but I'm still posting it. So I'm not under contract yet. I bought a house for 30,000 cash. I got a private lender in place for the 30 grand and a five year amortization. So he bought a house, 30 K cash brought in private money. So I'm only in this house for the closing costs. My plan was done or finance it so far kind of bread and butter. I have the home on marketplace. So Facebook marketplace. And this lady asks if I would trade houses. So I look at her. Uh, so I send her to look at it first. And then we talk about the details. She wants my house. Perfect. Now it's detail time. She has a lake house in South Carolina. It's a double wide on a permanent foundation. Mm. Uh, I was owner financing my house for 99 grand. So he bought it for 30 K owner financing it for 99 as is her house. I can probably owner finance for 175,000 give or take. And she wants my house in five grand to cover the expenses. So let's just kind of recap this. <laughs> Will bought the house for 30 K cash owner financing it for 99. Buyer comes in and says, Hey, I've got a house. I would like $5,000 for my house. If you'll give me your house and hers is worth 175. Yeah. So he just turned his closing cost money, thousand, two thousand dollars into what? 140,000 in equity mm -hmm. plus the cash flow. Yep. And at a maximum in five years, he's going to have a free, free note. Mm -hmm. And my guess is, um, if, if you divert the payment of the 175 K house to the 30 K loan to just free it up, probably in less than three years, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of ballparking it, mm -hmm. you know, he has options too. Yeah. Like this, since the house is on a lake, uh, if he has easy access to the lake, he could defer beginning his owner finance and not defer owner finance, but beginning it say for three years, he could, he could Airbnb that place on the lake yeah. for 36 months, create some cash that way. His house at that time is going to have even higher value. He can owner finance it for more than. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's good stuff. It, it, it's tough to mess up the exit on a good deal purchase. Uh, so, you know, multiple ways that, that you can skin this. I mean, he, he could retail the 175 and cash out. The other thing I like is neither one of these houses are primo houses. Yeah. One of them he bought for 30. And he's going to owner finance it for what again? 99. Right. And then the other one is on a lake and, and that, that seems like, but it's, it's a manufactured home. Yeah. So neither one of these are primo houses and he's going to create somewhere between 150 and $200,000. And yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and cash flow along the way. Uh, so really good deal there. So we're pulling for you, man. Go um, man. Second one is Ronnie Knighton. Uh, this was 15 hours ago in the group. Mm -hmm. So, um, he said, uh, thanks to Carl and Brad for helping me paper a sweet deal today. He brought uh, a deal to one of the support calls yesterday. Go Carl. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Carl. Uh, I said, what's the numbers? And so here's, here's the numbers. It's worth 205. They owe 45. They want $5,000 walk away. So he's buying it for 50 grand. 
Okay. Now the repairs, there's some repairs. There's about, there's about 5,000 in repairs. There's about 5,000 in repairs on the deal. So he'll be in at about 55 K to take it to 205. Uh, what I, what I started laughing at was Tasha's right here with us and, and she's making sure all these cameras and stuff work, but you start giving these numbers and Tasha's just shaking her head like this. My gosh. I mean, and, and, and Ronnie is not a long-term investor. He's been in real estate, but not a long-term investor. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, it, it is good, good stuff. Yeah. I mean, he has a deep background in sales and he's done some investment deals as well. I did a lot of transactions as a realtor, realtor last year, but uh, I think sometimes doesn't help. No. And, and, and oftentimes it, it hurts you because mm -hmm. now like you, you have a way of doing things. that's not the right way, mm -hmm. but um, he's starting to see the light, I think. And, and I think that he would say this is slightly, slightly different than what he's used to. So um, I was, I don't know what's 6% of 245. Well, it's 205. 205. Well, that's assuming you, you get both sides that's of the deal. Right. I mean, six grand, seven grand, probably um, typical, you know? So um, I was going to stop there. There's a third one. All right. So th this one was insanity, insanity. So this is Pranav. Okay. Uh, he, 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 he's a newer guy with us. And um, so he had a lead come in and uh, it was, so to, to give some context to this, he, he challenged me a little bit on the support call because he was concerned about, can I really find the money? You know, like if I have a good deal, can I really find the money? I said, yeah, I've never seen a good deal go unfunded. Uh, <clears throat> now he, he has a little bit of proof. So he posted, I'm not going to give the address for obvious reasons, um, but he, he gave the address. He said, will someone help me with an ARV? And so, um, and this is in St. Louis. So, um, <laughs> we have our guy, Justin Powell, uh, mm -hmm. that's in St. Louis. And he said, please let me help you with this. <laughs> okay. So my company is based in St. Louis and this is an incredible neighborhood, likely a generational opportunity to own a home here. Okay. We'll be as, we'll be as little or as much involved as you need us to be and would gladly fund the takedown. Mm. So Pranav didn't even ask for money <laughs> and they're like pitching, purchase money out of them. Okay. Now here's, here's the deal. The numbers, the mortgage is 378. Okay. The arrears are 50,000. So they owe around four, 420, 430. All right. Their walk away is 40. So they're in at about 460 repairs are, are 25. So about half a million. Okay. So Pranav's going to be in at half a million, which the money's already set up. Uh, it's worth 1.2 million. 1.2 million, 6,000 foot house, colonial. Tony's going to church over here, hitting the Oregon. Um, $1.2 million house. And, uh, you know, he's basically got a partner in Justin that says, Hey, we'll, we'll help you however we can. Once in a life. And you know, Pranav did not fish in that neighborhood. You yeah. never heard of that neighborhood. That neighborhood fished him out. Well, and yesterday on the support call, he was like, Hey, can you, you look at the RV? Me and Carl are doing it. And I mean, it's a, it's a gated community and it, it's tough to, to comp those, especially if there's no turnover and it's in an area that's a good area, but not, you know, this house is 6,000 square feet, mm. you know, colonial style deco 1920s, mm. you know? And, um, I said, well, here's one that sold in 2010. No, it was 2013, 2013 at 700,000. And it's your same square footage because he thought it might be worth 700. I was like, it's not 700. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it's not 700. It's far more. And um, yeah. Paper? Uh, I hope to God it is. <laughs> it should be. Uh, I don't remember if it is or not, but uh, I think so. I think yeah. so. But yeah. that's the kind of deals, guys, that are floating around out here. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to have a, a ton of cash or experience or or whatever to make it work. You, you have to follow the process. So, and uh, nobody would guess that neighborhood. No. No, nobody would get $50,000 behind. Yeah. 50,000, you know, in a $1.2 million neighborhood. And yet just think about that. So what he could make five to 700,000 on this deal. Yeah. Right. And it's in that kind of a neighborhood. And then we'll, we'll probably before that whole thing's over with, 
for 300,000 out of those two properties. Yeah, if he holds a paper and cash flows it. Paper. Yeah. And and they're they're nowhere near that kind of value. Nobody would think to fish where Will was where where those those deals came from. Yeah. So anything works at a price. We'll we'll take the six thousand foot one point two million dollar house. We'll take the thirty K house uh, that we can own or finance for a hundred and everything in the middle. So basically what those two guys did is they went they, they got in a canoe, went out and just sat there in the middle of the pond with the fish finding. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Put yourself where it's motivated sellers. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So how do we make 2023 the best year yet? And so I've spent some time thinking about this. And these are the things that I personally do that I've done right around first of the year. I really started thinking about New Year's right after Thanksgiving. And I'm really, really happy with what we're seeing. I'm excited about this year. Um, interest rates, by the way, are at a four month low. We went from seven and a half to 6.14 yesterday. So I think we're going to go back into the fives. Mm -hmm. and if we if we hit 5.75, we'll have another run up on price. And Brad, can I ask you the seven the in, the interest rate that we hear? My understanding is it's not that is the commercial rate. It's not necessarily what we're borrowing. Correct. Well, it depends on what rate we're talking about. Whenever, whenever I say 6.14, that was a 30 year mortgage. Okay. All right. So yeah, that's a 30 year. That's rate. what we get money for. Well, no, because we're not out, out there borrowing money. Right. I just meant, I just meant that's what, um, that's what the. From banks. From banks. Yes. That's what we would, if we were trying to get a, a, a regular mortgage right now, that's what we borrow. Money. Yeah. So if you're a home so buyer. commercial rate is higher than that. Correct. So if you're a home buyer and, and you're looking to, to owner occupy a home right now on a 30 year note, you're looking at six, six in a six and an eighth basically. And um, that is substantially lower. It's about a point and a half lower from the peak about three, three and a half months ago. So um, we get into the fives and it's, it's blow up time again. Yeah. And inventory is still low. It, it's higher than it was, but it's still low comparatively. Um, and we, we hit in the fives and it'll be another run up on pricing, multiple offers. We had multiple offers on one about a week ago. You're the second person this week I've heard say that, and both are people that I respect highly in what they say. Interesting. You and and John Joan said the same thing this week. Old jug, yeah. yeah. Um, so a few ideas for you in terms of of how do we navigate? What is the certainty of you'll lose focus and energy around your goals? Okay. Mm -hmm. So number one, I want to submit to you that you come up with a perfect day. And you talk about, this is when I, I wake up in the morning. This is when I go to bed. This is what I accomplish. This is what brings me energy. This is what the net result of that day was. And you really timeline it out. And then you compare what your average day looks like compared to your perfect day. And you're going to see that there's a gap. Okay. Every day that's not your perfect day is a day where two things are happening. Number one, you're wasting your energy. OK. And secondly, you're not meeting the potential that you have. OK. And it's not about. Um, for me, if every day looked like I went to the beach every day and, you know, started on my rum runners about 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. And that would be that'd be hell for me. Yeah. You know, like we, we want to go out there and create and do something and. And, and help. I mean, we, we've got two deals today that we're talking to them to, to sign them up where they're both behind on payments. You know, and these kinds of situations are out there. So come up with your perfect day and begin to gradually get to that point. It's not going to be a, a switch. It's going to be a, a volume knob. So you slowly turn up the volume as opposed to thinking you're just going to automatically change. Yeah. Okay. Number two decide the goal and commit to the process. Okay. Decide the goal, commit to the process and deciding the goal is not to be taken lightly. I had many people the last two weeks of last year say, well, what's your goals? And I'm like, I'm not ready to talk about it because you vocalize it and it gives energy to it. And I wasn't ready to commit to it yet. 
So you decide, and let's talk about, let's just break this up. So whenever I say decide, I really recommend you get a couple hours by yourself when you're not in a great mood, but you're not in a terrible mood. And you start to think about, if I can place myself at the end of next year, and I look back on the time that's passed, what would have to happen for me to feel really happy with what I've done? Okay, and that can be both personal and business, and it should be. So you decide first, and then committing to the process is going to be the most important part. So I'm starting with a new trainer, Rondell. Hope works out there too. Yeah. And uh, so I'm seeing Hope. Hope's a beast, and Rondell's uh, a beast, and, and Hope and Josh both, man. They just yeah. Um, and I asked him yesterday. I said, "What's the biggest mistake you see people make?" And he said, in terms of what? I said, whatever comes to mind. You know, I, I want to see like just what's at the forefront, not necessarily with exercise, like whatever. And he said, people don't have the discipline first and then the commitment to see it through. It's like anybody can be disciplined for a day. Most people can be disciplined for a week. Some people can be disciplined for 30 days. Very few can be disciplined for six months, nine months. You know, and I was like, well, what does that look like? He's like, well, in terms of this, you don't miss a meal. You know exactly what you're going to eat the next day. You know, there's no variance at all. It's like, you think about that, man. Like, that's serious. You know, so you have to commit to the process. But at some point, um, you're going to have doubts and you're going to have points when things are not going as well. Uh, growth is not linear. It's not, you know, every day is better than the last day. There's ups and ups and downs and swirls and, you know, you end up here and you started here, but it's not a lot. Okay. That's just not how it works. I've never seen that. I've never seen growth that happens just like straight line. So we have to anticipate that this is going to happen. And this is where I think most people miss is they set the goal by March. They've forgotten what the goal is. They had a lot of motivation week one but they didn't really have the commitment. Okay. So there's three things that I'm going to submit to you that are going to help with this. I call it triple A. So, you know, like you, you get, you, you break down on the side of the road and what do you do? You call triple A. Mm -hmm. We don't, but some people do. Yeah. Um, Ghostbusters. Yeah. So you call triple A and they send their roadside as assistance to get you off the side of the road. So this is what we call triple A when it comes to goal planning. All right. First is affirmations. Okay, you have to tell yourself who you are because there's two main drivers of behavior. And the, the first is identity. So if you think of yourself as a certain person, this is what I identify that I am. You can't be incongruent with that. So if you think to yourself like, I'm a world champion jujitsu player, but then you, you can't not go to practice. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So the first reason that, that people behave a certain way is identity. And the second is purpose. What's the purpose for my life? You, it's very difficult for someone to be incongruent with that, even medium term. Right. So we have to have affirmations. And this is partly why we have these coffee cups, guys. Mm -hmm. you know, first one, I'm always in the right place at the right time. And when Rachel Wilson uh, posted that she hit her goals, uh, that's the one that she, she posted. I'm always at the right place. The right place. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, um, you know, these are the ones that, that I did for years and, and still do. And sometimes I'll, I'll run into a problem and I can just feel it come up. It's a weird, weird, weird thing for me, mm. you know, but, um, I think that you come up with 10 or so, you know, we have 10, I think you come up with 10 or so for yourself and, you spend time every morning going through that and it'll get to where you don't even have to think about it, you know, and you can do this in no extra time. So you're driving down the road, you're at the grocery store, you're at the gym, you're already committed to what you're doing, but you can start running through these. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first is affirmations. Secondly is abundance training, abundance training. So I'm a firm believer that, um, how do you put this? 
I think that the people that you're around, obviously, they influence you. But I, I almost feel like the surroundings that you're around influence you as well. So um, I believe in going and looking at cars that you feel like you can't afford, if that brings you energy. I'm not a car person. You know, like I really don't care about cars. Um, but go look at cars you can't afford. Go look at houses. You know, go to open houses with your spouse uh, or by yourself or whatever if they're not. Uh, in the in in the same mindset as you, and walk around what uh, is a six or seven million dollar house, mm -hmm. you know, and just feel how how that feels for you, you know, and um, that's going to give you a mindset change because you're going to see whoever lives here, they're a per person just like I am, right? Okay, and then third, and I think that this is the most important. Third is anchors. Okay, what is an anchor? Oh yeah, what's an anchor? An anchor is anything that makes it to where you can't get away from your goal. Well, that's how you're still tied in. Yeah. So, so tied in. you know, you, you, you have a three by five index card with your goals and they're sitting on, on the dash of your car. You have a three by five index card and they're on your mirror, your bathroom mirror at home. Right. Okay. We have thermometers around the office that track where we're at with our goal by quarter. So, I can't get away from it, you know, and you certainly sure as hell can't forget about what it is because it's staring at you all the time. And any ideal is a judge. So not only is it staring at you, it's judging you as to whether you've accomplished it, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't think that that's a negative thing, mm -hmm. but I feel if we do these things, guys, that we're going to have a good chance. If you commit to them, you figure out what your perfect day looks like. You decide what your goals are. You commit to that process. And you do your abundance training, you do your affirmations, and you do your uh, your anchors. Then I think you're going to have a good, good shot of creating a much, much better year than you anticipate that you can. And I've seen people go through this process and accomplish. Mm -hmm. You know where they've struggled for such a long time, but then uh, I know Keith did this about three years ago, mm -hmm. and um, he he had his thermometers and he he showed the pictures of his thermometers. You get them on Amazon. They're like the fundraising thermometers. Right. They're not expensive. They don't have to be expensive. But that next year was the game changer for them. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think it was in part of going through this process. So uh, anything to, to add? No, I mean. Um, Where's somebody going to mess up on this? Well, there's lots of ways to, to sneak out of it. Sneak. That's yeah. the word. It is. I mean, there's lots of ways to sneak out, talk yourself out of whatever there is. The thing, the, the thing that I do that's going to be what you just talked about is going to be helpful with the affirmations, the abundance training, the anchor is. For me, I used to make my result. I used to make my goal the result. Uh huh. So I have two primary goals this year. Two. I have what I would call two my primary goals this year. One is I want to have the health. I'm 62. I'd like to have the health of a healthy 30 year old. Mm. I, did. I like that. It's not easy at 62. But uh, wh wh where did we get the idea that something that it, we have to have a goal for is going to be easy? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And the other one this year, I want to make $1 million. Okay. I've never set a financial goal before like that. Okay. I like that. It is. It will be a challenge to me for this year. All right, I'm going to buy you a thermometer to put up in your office. That's, uh, thank you. I yeah. like that thermometer. And um, so the thing that has helped me in my past is I've been crawling out of something. Like yesterday, I had the opportunity to go to lunch with somebody and uh, hand that somebody a thank you for a tip they gave me that made me $70,000 on a deal this past year. Mm -hmm. And I had an opportunity to, to hand them twenty one hundred dollar bills as a thank you at lunch yesterday. Awesome. Nev I mean, I I thought I would have been a nervous wreck, and in the past I was afraid that if I give this away, where will I give it back? Yeah. But it was so freeing to do that yesterday. And so the thing that has helped me the most is I quit making the result my goal. Yeah. And I've started making the disciplines it takes to get to that spot my goals i love that so instead of 30 year old health and one million dollars this year being my goal my goal is whatever disciplines it takes to get there yeah so i have tiny small goals that are daily 
Yeah, perfect. And I have to hit them every day. The result will take care of itself. It That's right. Take care of my small time. Yeah. Disciplines. So That's yeah. powerful. And and one thing, um, I did a podcast on this. Gosh, I guess maybe back in April or May, because I was doing 75 hard at the time. And um, I was I was running in the rain. By the way, when he was doing 75 hard, I was doing 75 soft. <laughs> <laughs> you were running in the rain. I was running in the rain and it was, it was right. It was like one of those blackberry winter kind of days where it was, it was kind of spring, but not really. And I was out there and I'm like, I'm going to get wet anyway. So I'm just going to not wear a shirt. You yeah. know, it's like a wet shirt is just as cold as no shirt. And yeah, then, you know, that's true. So, um, so I'm running and the thought that came to me is you don't have to love the process to love the process. You know, I don't love running in the rain when it was, I don't know, 50 degrees, you know, for 45 minutes. But I love what that gave me after I was done. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like you don't have to love the process to love the process, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I think it's kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you take your goal off of your, your, your focus off of 12-31-23 and what does that day look like and you focus on, what does what the ninth, the tenth look like? Mm -hmm. That's a big man. That's it a is. big difference. It is one of my disciplines that I've never done before. And you mentioned it down here when you said uh, anchor. Mm -hmm. Never before have I told my goals publicly mm -hmm. ahead of time. It left me a way to sneak out of it. Yeah, I never would have said that before, but it left me a way to sneak out. Of it. And so one of my disciplines I had was I was going to tell my goals publicly this time. I didn't know it was going to tell them today. And even now, once they came out of my mouth on the inside in here, a major freak out took place mm. <laughs> because how do we expect to do things we've never done before? And somehow we're not going to freak out. Some. Well, and I think that's true. And the last time that I personally did it was when me and you did that goal setting workshop, that three night intensive, which was probably the beginning of the the, the end of 21. Okay. And I said, okay, we're going to create $2 million in note equity for the year, which looking back was just stupid because we started doing a million dollars in equity per month. Yes. Five Six months after Six that. Six months after that. Did three straight months and had to stop on purpose. Had, yeah, I had to slow it down because it, it was too much for fulfillment. And so um, I hope the same thing happens to you that, uh, you know, you, you start uh, doing half your goal per month. Yeah. You know? Yes. You know? Hit, hit the organ tone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, guys. If y'all need anything, reach out. Support at uh -huh. bradsmotherman.com. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you guys next week.